Artificial insemination in Kenya started with the establishment of Central Artificial Insemination Station, CAIS, in 1946 for the production of semen. Countrywide, the delivery of AI services since 1966 through the Kenya National Artificial Insemination Services, KNAIS, has been a major contributor to the growth of dairy farming in Kenya. The Kenya Animal Genetic Resource Center, Kagrig, mainly deals in germplasm production for the purposes of distribution to the farming community. It was established for purposes of conservation of animal resources for all livestock and emerging livestock in Kenya. It engages in strategic production and distribution of semen and embryos which they produce either on site at Kagrig or at the farmer's level. Extension Services Department Directorate for that matter is involved in uh, delivering education or knowledge, dissemination of knowledge to farmers, packaging to suit the different uh, environments and regions because every region has its unique needs. So we are also coming up with the, the catalogs that you've seen that were distributed during the field day and the newsletter magazine that comes annually to be able to enlighten our farmers on the most trending issues, if it's diseases and the best uh, animal husbandry practices. Artificial insemination AI is the process of depositing semen in the uterus of the cow by use of equipment instead of allowing natural mating. The insemination process is widely practiced in Keto and semen is collected from selected bulls in hygienic environment. Artificial insemination is an assisted reproductive technology that enables farmers to use the genetics of one bull in a far distant place eh? and uh, it also prevents uh, transmission of diseases and that explains why the Kenya Animal Genetic Resources Centre was established is to ensure that uh, farmers are able to get uh, quality genetics for improvement of, their national, of the national herd while at the same time control breeding diseases. The centre was started in 1946. AI itself, the artificial insemination started in this country, it started in the world in 1935. So it's an old technology but the adoption has been quite slow across the globe. Kenya is one of the leading uh, countries within the region in terms of dairy. We are recognized as the center of excellence in dairy activities. And all other countries within the region look up to us to providing even the breeding stock as well as even the semen itself and embryos for that matter. So artificial insemination in addition to preventing spread of diseases, it allows for the widespread of use of a single bull. And it's quite economical than even raising a bull. Because once you have a bull, you can only use it once and you may not need to keep it. So it's a costly affair to bear a bull. But with semen, currently Kagrit is selling semen at 250 shillings only at retail price. So you can imagine that is far much cheaper and affordable than having to rear a bull that you have to raise, feed it, meet its uh, health costs and all that. There are many benefits that comes along with practicing animal insemination on the dairy cows. This helps to boost an animal's bloodline, body structure, disease resistance and increase milk production. Artificial insemination is uh, a faster way of uh, improving your heart. You're able to make a choice in terms of uh, the genetics you can use because with the availability of the catalog, you can assess your animal, assess the faults in the cow, and decide on which sire can improve uh, in the linear traits in the next generation. For example, if you want to improve the dairy character of the next generation, it can be easily done by just looking at the catalog on the potential of the sires based on the records that are revealed in the sire catalog. And you can choose that, use it, and with objectives you can be able to improve if it's productivity, you can also improve the milk production as well, based on use of AI. 
For the insemination process to be successful to a farmer, not everyone can do this process. It requires a profession who is a veterinarian to undertake the process as they have the right knowledge on how to do the job. The people who are efficient to do artificial insemination are the trained AI service providers in the field. These are graduates from the uh, Ahitis. We have Ahiti Kabete, Ahiti Nyahururu and Domba. We also have in the university training and uh, Ijaton is also training this, uh, for this course. So these are people who are also licensed by the Kenya Veterinary Board. So they are accredited by a, a recognized body to carry out this work. And they are also well versed besides doing artificial insemination. They have a background on animal health. So in as much as that they are serving the farmer's cow, if they detect any problem, they are able to manage it at that time. And also provide the additional farmer extension or farmer education while still they undertake the artificial insemination at the farm level. Most of the farmers are still glued to the traditional practices of a bull mounting on a cow. This leads to fast spread of diseases due to unchecked direct contact. I would say AI is quite efficient in uh, improving the genetics and the value of your animals. Why? This is because artificial insemination also entails proper record keeping. The farmer will also have done accurate heat detection and uh, with proper insemination at the right time, with quality semen, there will be a successful conception. So ideally AI is the best way to go because you're also controlling on diseases. It is safer than using a bull because sometimes you realize that these bulls may have not been screened for breeding diseases and it, that bull becomes a vehicle for disease transmission. But with semen, it's a guarantee that is of quality because it has to be produced under the international required standards by any, inter, by any artificial insemination center. Animals detected to be on heat in the morning are inseminated in the afternoon and those detected in the afternoon or evenings are inseminated the following morning within 10 to 12 hours later. Once a cow is presented for insemination, the area around the vulva should be clean with no dirt or smelly discharge. The inseminated animal should be allowed to rest for about 30 minutes to avoid semen flowing out. The animals should be well fed so as to maintain a good body condition. We normally recommend uh, an AMPM rule 12 hours apart. From the time the animal is seen to be on the onset of heat, we recommend that you take 12 hours and inseminate after 12 hours thereafter, such that uh, the, the egg in the cow will have been ovulated and it would have been ready for fertilization and for purposes of insemination. Yeah, so we tell farmers the AMPM rule, you see the animal on heat in the morning, it is served in the, in the, in the evening. If it's in the evening, tomorrow morning, a span of 12 hours. Beyond that, the successive uh, conception might fail. Determining pregnancy in cattle has benefits. A producer is able to know which cattle to be the managed and which needs to be selected. All this because a non-pregnant cow is unable to produce returns in the form of a calf, unlike a pregnant cow which can give birth to and raise a calf to winning where it can be sold as either a food animal or a breeding stock and by understanding the physical characteristics that shows how a cow or heifer could possibly be bred diagnosis in determining the increased or decreased probability of pregnancy can be made without the often costly consultation by veterinarian. The first sign is that the animal will not uh, show heat after 21 days. Then again, uh, if you call a, veterinar a, a veterinarian with the specialized equipment at uh, one month with an ultrasound, the vet will be able to, to identify that the animal is uh, pregnant. More so in the field situation, an, an experienced vet can also pick the pregnancy as early as one month. But uh, for, we recommend at three months when it's safer to avoid uh, crushing the amniotic vesicle. 
Artificial insemination requires very accurate heat detection and proper timing of insemination for greater chances of conception. The inseminator must be trained on the technique and it requires high investment in equipment. One of the disadvantages is that there is need for correct timing because if you fail to, it requires a lot of keenness and we normally ask farmers to check for heat signs three times a day so it's a little bit involving. Then again, uh, the quality of semen has to be ensured. The technician has to maintain the tank with liquid nitrogen to ensure that the viability of that semen is maintained. So it is sort of a rigorous, a laborious exercise altogether. Then again, we ensure that the health of the animals has to be maintained because a sickly animal may not conceive. Yes, so there are normally three factors, the cow factors, the farmer factors, and the technician factors that we actually have to look into to ensure that they successful AI. The process of artificial insemination starts with a healthy bull that is disease-free and producing ample quantities of high-quality semen. The fertility of cow is important, the competency of the inseminator in a clean environment. Once you get the report from the farmer, you get to understand the onset, the time of the onset of heat, then you'll be able to calculate, is it within the 12 hours that you recommend? And as soon as you get to the farm, confirm that the animal that is uh, being said to be on heat is actually the one, because sometimes you find that there is a mix-up. The animal that is mounting on others is the one that is normally inseminated, and not the one that is standing to be mounted. Because we say it needs to be on standing heat. At a it's still calm. Then now you have to check to ensure that uh, the animal is not pregnant, because there are also some animals, 5% of the animals will show heat in as much as they're already pregnant. So you ensure that the animal is open, is not pregnant. Then after that, you have to check whether the heat signs are available, are visible like the clear mucus and uh, the reddening of the vulva. So those, and also you might see some bit of matting on the sides of the animal because it might have uh, spread the mucus on the sides with using the, the switch of the tail. So when you're sure the mucus is clean without any flocules, eh, you can go ahead and uh, prepare the semen. You get the semen from the liquid nitrogen tank after you check the records to also avoid inbreeding. To check the records and establish that the semen that you want to use is going to improve a certain trait in the in the next generation of that cow. That's when now you throw the semen at 37 degrees Celsius at uh, 20 to 30 seconds between 30 to 20 between 20 to 30 seconds. Then after that, you load the semen into a pistolet that is pre-warmed. Then after that, you cover the pistolet using an AI socks. Then now you, you, put on the, you put on the glove on the left hand, and then now you inseminate the animal. Then ensure that the semen is deposited in the right location for success in terms of conception. Then you wait for 21 days. Abortion is the pregnancy loss between 42 and 260 days where pregnancy is indicated by rectal palpation 35 to 40 days after service. Most abortions occurring during the second and third months go undetected until the cow fails to calve or return to heat. The most frequent infectious agents are bacteria like brucellosis, leptospirosis, salmonellosis, Hemophilosomas, mycoplasma, and listria. With the issues of abortion, sometimes it involves diseases, reproductive diseases. We would recommend that uh, the farmer calls the vet to have a look at the animal. Because most abortions are caused by reproductive diseases, some of which can be of zoonotic nature, meaning that they can be transmitted from, hum from animals to humans. Some of them include brucellosis. That one has uh, majorly presents as abortions. 
Yes, there are others, but that one has been picked as one of the causes of abortions on farms. So with such a disease, it's of necessity that the farmer calls the veterinary person or the animal health service provider to be able to connect them with the local veterinary office. Yes. Kagrik sells their siemens to the selected distributors in the country. They have agents in every county who supply the corrected and collected semen from their laboratories. Any farmer who visits their distribution center is able to acquire the correct catalog and select the semen and bull they want in their farm. We sell it to our distributors at 200 shillings so that they're able to sell at 250 shillings at retail price. So the, uh, the AI providers will put up a markup of uh, the, the fuel and the professional fee, the arm length service. That is what makes up to 1,000 to 1,500. But the cost may vary depending also on the distances that have to be covered. From a French company. To increase conception rate, the farmer is advised to identify an efficient, reliable inseminator who hands on AI experience to service the animal. A better understanding of your candidate cow, knowledge of the variety of semen available, the availability to interpret bull catalog to identify traits attributed to different bulls, and the price of each bull's semen remain the best tools for selecting the ideal sire of your heifers. One thing as the farmers plan to breed, every farmer has, needs to enumerate their objectives, their breeding objectives. There are those who want to breed for milk production. There are those who want to breed for improved feet and leg. There are those who are breeding for others. Yes, there are those who want animals with uh, less incidence of mastitis. So ideally the first thing is the farmer must identify what is their breeding objective. And that way, they'll be able to go into the sire catalog and identify what bull or sire can actually meet their objectives. There are bulls that lower the incidence of mastitis because they have lower somatic cell count. There are those bulls that also improve on fertility. There are those that improve on the, the milking speed and the temperament. We want to breed for more docile animals. Yeah, so depending on what the farmer is breeding for, there is a whole range of bulls and the catalogs are there and quite uh, farmer explanatory. Yeah, so we recommend that they first identify their objectives.